Hey everybody! This is going to be the first installment in a Tuesday Tool Time review. Today we're going to be looking at a laser engraver. This is the Ortur Laser Master 3 and I'm going to show you guys some of the things that you can do with them and I'm going to focus on what you can do with a laser engraver in the world of wood turning since that's mostly what I do. So let's get started. I'm not going to get into the weeds of the specifications for this machine. It is a 10 watt diode laser and so it is capable of engraving as well as cutting certain materials. In this case, since y'all know I am a lifetime member of the Woodturners Funnel Club, I decided to see if I could cut a hole in the bottom of this bowl and then cut a plug from the same file and make a patch. The Laser Master 3 has an air assist option. I don't have one of the smaller units yet, so I'm just using my air compressor set to 15 PSI. And unfortunately, the little hose won't stay in the top. There isn't really anything to secure it, so I'm just holding it in there until I'm done. The air assist helps keep the laser clean and makes it for a better cut. It will ultimately help reduce scorching. Now, I did get some scorching in this. Um, I may have needed to do different passes. I don't have the settings down quite yet. And I think that the type of file that I did wasn't quite right because it didn't trace it out in a circle. It did it more linearly. And so there are kind of some edges that um, are, are strange. So I may end up doing this again. But the gist of it is that you can cut out a circle and then cut out a plug or an inlay or however you want to do it and make all sorts of interesting things. This unit can be controlled either by an app on your phone or tablet and there is iOS and Android versions of that or by a variety of software on the PC. Um, a lot of people use Lightburn for controlling their lasers. That is a paid program. I think it's about $60, but it does incorporate the drawing program as part of it. So that's kind of nice. Right now I'm using a free program, which is called Laser Gerbil, and I'm using that on a Windows PC in conjunction with Inkscape, which is also a free program, and that is a vector-based drawing program. So you can manipulate your images in Inkscape and then export them out to the laser gerbil program and you're off to off to go. Um, I again I know nothing about any of this kind of software. I took an hour and a half or so, watched some tutorials on the laser gerbil and I was up and running pretty much after that. Uh, it seemed really intimidating at first but it really isn't too bad and it offers you more flexibility than just using the app. The app is fine and I probably would understand it a little better now after having used the laser gerbil program, but it's easy enough that I think that I'm just going to stick with that. So obviously one of the biggest things that people do with laser engravers is to do cutting boards and custom signs and all of that kind of stuff. I picked up a cheap bamboo cutting board just to use as practice and the Santa tray is not my design. Um, there are tons of them out there, but I did actually create it from scratch in the Inkscape program, and it came out pretty good. So this is just an example of something that you can do that's a decent size. I believe that the working area on the Laser Master 3 is 400 by 400 millimeters, at least with the standard setup. I think there's also an extension that you can get, and they also have um, a rotary accessory so you can do things like tumblers. Um, they have enclosures that you can buy and I'm going to look into that because it really does create some smoke. Um, I have a fan blowing out the, the door wall right now but that's not going to work in the winter so I'm going to put a four inch fan out through the wall and then exhaust it that way. This is a pretty fast laser. It can go 20,000 millimeters per minute. Now having said that your quality and settings are going to affect that. Um, I'm still not sure I have all the correct settings, but I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think it's about 14 by 10 inches total, and it took about an hour and a half to engrave it. Okay, now let's look at some more possibilities for lathe work. 
I like to embellish my wood turnings. A little while back, I made a bowl out of butternut and I cut a channel into the side of it. And then I inlaid a piece of leather with a little mixed media bit on the front of it. And I really liked the way that that came out. But I got to thinking about it and I said, you know, it would be really cool if you could etch a design into the leather before you put it on the bowl. And so I decided to give that a shot. So I have a strip of vegetable tanned leather and I made a little planety kind of looking design in Inkscape. I used one of those flexible tape measures that you use in sewing to get the circumference of a piece of scrap cylinder that I had lying around. I made the design the exact length of the circumference of the cylinder, but then when I put the leather down on the board to engrave it, I forgot to trim it beforehand. So I'll have to trim it later, but that doesn't really matter for this application. I just wanted to show you guys some other things that you can do with a laser engraver that are related to wood turning. One of the other projects that I was really excited to try with a laser engraver is to put a design around the rim of a bowl. Now y'all know I don't always start with the easiest of projects and this is no different. The width of this rim is only about 10 millimeters so I didn't have a whole lot of space to play with. I just made a circle design in Inkscape just with stars and little solid circles of a varying size and shape. I used that piece of black mat board that's underneath the bowl for a test piece and then it looked like it was going to line up perfectly and it's darn close. Ideally I would have made the design a little bit smaller so that you have a little bit more of a buffer around the rim but this was already going to be a practice piece since the design in the middle is not centered. Overall I'm really happy with how the border came out and I see a lot of possibilities for this technique. And speaking of the design in the middle, this is a digital engraving of the original, which is a hand-carved block print on rubber. And this was made by the uber-fabulous Jen Bodwin of Needle and Knife Studio. I think it turned out great. There's just a little bit of scorching in a couple of places, but this is straight off of the engraver with no additional sanding or even cleaning it up with a brush or blowing it with the air compressor, so I'm pretty happy with that. The next project, while it looks like wood right there, is actually a glass tile from one of the big box stores that has a wood grain pattern on the back of it. When you're engraving glass or acrylic or anything else that's clear, you need to have a dark coating on it, otherwise the laser just goes right through it. So in this case, I used a black whiteboard marker. Um, going forward, I would probably use either spray paint or paint on some acrylic with maybe a foam brush. Just something where you get a little bit more consistent coat. The whiteboard marker has a tendency to be a little bit streaky and then sometimes if you go back over it later you get some lines so you'll see those in the finished product but that's only because the whiteboard marker finish is not uniform it's not a product of the laser or the engraving there are so many different things that you can do with a laser engraver you can work on all kinds of materials in this particular video though I wanted to kind of show you guys some stuff that you could do that's still really related to woodworking and this tile might not seem like it but this would be really cool inlaid into some wood and made into a sign trivets are another option I made these years ago they're just basically little frames that hold a 6x6 tile and you can take a custom tile that you've done on your engraver and make your own custom trivets so far I'm really impressed with this it's a nice machine or tour took the time to make some improvements on some of their previous models this feels very solid and very smooth uh, it was simple to put together there are lots of good tutorials out there on how to do it. Um, I like the fact that you can use either an app or you can use a PC or Mac or Linux computer. Um, you can use free software or you can use paid software. It's There's nothing proprietary about that part of it. 
Um, there are really nice safety features. There's an emergency stop button and a key that you have to turn before the machine will actually turn on, which will keep little ones away from it because it is a dangerous thing and you do have to be careful. So yeah, I can see that I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. If you guys think that it might be something that you're interested in, I'll have a discount code available and I will put the link for that down in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, y'all be safe out there.